Wouldn't it be great if the news media did its job? Wouldn't that be remarkable if the news media did its job and we could trust what they had to say? I mean, we look at the Hunter laptop that's now, you know, exhibit one in this um, in this effort to convict Hunter Biden. It's exhibit number one. And the DOJ says, yeah, it's real. After we were told for years, that's Russian disinformation, Russian disinformation. Russian disinformation comes from the Biden family and Hillary Clinton and Chuck Schumer. That's where Russian disinformation or, you know, pseudo disinformation comes from because it's all the same. Trying to mislead us, flood the flood the zone with nonsense. That's what I would say. Uh, I'm going to give you another illegal crime update. You heard about the mopeds, the scooters that they're using in New York City to attack and commit crimes. They being illegal aliens in the country. Well, how about an update from Florida? We're going to go to bite number 11. Listen to this. Congressman Wahlberg is on hold. Oh, I take that back. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Hold that. Hold Fox that. Stop, News stop. hit the streets with the NYP. Stop that right there. We actually got Congressman Wahlberg is on the line with us now. I uh, didn't think he was going to be here, but he showed up just in the nick of time. Congressman, good to have you here. Thank you for taking the time on a Friday. Yeah, well, good to be with you, and, and uh, glad we got past the biz- busy signal on the phone. Well, there you go. Yeah, you know, the, I, I don't control that. Uh, my tech fairies are just not working as well as they used to, I'm telling you, Congressman. <laughs> uh, let me ask you something before we... You've got an important bill I want to talk about, but I want to ask you about this. Uh, if I go back to the... To October of 2020, New York Post broke a very big story in October of 2020. They were immediately shut down on social media. They were immediately smeared. And anybody who talked about the Hunter Biden laptop was demeaned, mocked, made fun of, and silenced. Oh, it's Russian disinformation. We've got 51, you know, Intelligence Committee people. It's, And yet this week, in the Hunter Biden trial in Wilmington, Delaware, the laptop that was discredited by everyone is now exhibit one because the Department of Justice apparently says it's real because it's real, Congressman. What a revelation. It's always been real. And that was their concern because uh, if it was real, it was going to impact an election and uh, discredit uh, people who should be discredited and uh, and go after go after President Trump in a way, and and even more importantly, uh, go after the the movement, uh, the MAGA movement. Uh, So all of that was done thinking that ultimately controlling the Department of Justice, you could always get away with it. Well, thankfully, the Republican majority uh, was reformed uh, this term, and uh, we took controls, and uh, Jim Jordan, Jamie Comer, and others um, surgically began to strike and with all sorts of pushback uh, and Merritt Garland trying to keep and still trying to keep direct information out of the hands of an appropriate congressional committee. Uh, finally, we got this and, and it, it, it's become too much. Well, too here's much the real question. Hide anymore. Here's the question, Congressman. If the DOJ accepts the laptop at face value, which clearly they do in this attempt to convict Hunter Biden for buying a gun illegally. We'll see how that case plays out. But the laptop entered into evidence. So now you have to go to the emails on the laptop. Now you go to the big guy being cut in for part of the money on these things. If the right. laptop is legitimate, then the contents of the laptop are legitimate. And the questions then bring a cloud over Joe Biden and all of the things that he denied being connected to because it's all there. There's evidence of criminal activity in that laptop far beyond a gun crime, right or wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And it also uh, has another striking contrast to what uh, they did with the documents case and and Biden saying he was a sentimentally uh, sentimental uh, elderly old guy that uh, would would, you know, play well in front of a jury. So we're not going to charge him for this uh, because it would be uh, exercise futility even though, though you go against Trump. In this case, you've got email um, or, or, or voicemail messages and email messages and text messages from a guy that wasn't in that type of state, at least as far as we knew, uh, back several years. 
And so what does that say about the big guy? What does it say about his involvement, direct involvement, knowledgeable involvement, in the things that just are not copacetic, uh, a technical term, but yes. nonetheless... It's it's a real it's a real real conundrum for there now. Well, and it's now a real problem. Laptop becomes reality. It's a yeah. real problem, you know. And I connect this, and and now there's an, uh, a bunch of conversation on CBS News about a sixty four million dollar uh, campaign donation to the Biden campaign in two thousand twenty July, for which there's no trail of where it came from. An anonymous sixty four million dollar donation in July two thousand twenty. I'll, I'll dig into that more in the days to come. But I want that to happens know, to be illegal. But, I mean, of course it does. Of course it's illegal. Um, speaking of illegal and illegitimate, you mentioned the Department of Justice. Mayor Garland, in front of Congress this week, asked about Jack Smith. Was he ever uh, picked by the president and confirmed by the United States Senate? No and no. How, how, how do we have a private citizen that has no confirmation from the United States Senate pursuing anyone, especially a former president? Uh, because, of, because of a cabal of power that is attempting at all costs to discredit and ultimately convict a former president. Uh, th this, this is a, a campaign of unreal proportions, using any means possible uh, to get the president. And now light of day is starting to get on it, and it's getting... To, to be an, ex, an extreme problem, not yeah. only for what they want to do to the president, but for the re-election of Joe Biden. Well, and you know, the, the judge in the case yesterday said she is going to put this on hold until they determine the legitimacy yeah. of Jack Smith. Big deal. All right, we got about a minute and a half left here. You have introduced a bill to block Joe Biden's overtime rule. What's the rule? What's the bill? Well, the overtime rule... Um, does something that we've never wanted to do in, in industry, manufacturing, business itself. You've got people that uh, th they want to be in a salaried position. It's prestige, but it also is upward mobility. They don't want to press a time clock. They're not asking for that. They know that uh, they're going to be working overtime, and it's not going to be remunerated anything beyond what they get for their normal salary. They're willing to accept that. In this case, they're attempting to do away with that and take it uh, about a 65 percent jump from where overtime uh, payment is required right now from 30 i believe as i recollect to 38,000 we're going to jump up to 58 almost 59,000 dollars you will be required as a business person as a as an owner as a manager of a company to pay a person who's salaried at uh, 58,000 dollars or below to receive overtime again what it does hurt small uh, business is what it does it. yeah and so you've got a bill out there yeah, to stop it small business they can't afford it yeah they can't afford it congressman tim walburn big week uh i wish we had more time we don't uh a lot of things to keep track of but we'll pick it back up again next week sir have a great weekend you as well greatly appreciate it congressman tim walburn yeah